Life is short. Don't waste time worrying about what people think of you. Hold on to the ones that care. In the end, they will be the only ones there. Anonymous. It's not been long since she has turned 21. That day was the one she had been dreaming of. The special side of the day that was meeting that woman. That morning, she woke up early and dressed quickly. She did not even want to waste one single second that day. All she wanted was to be on time at the meeting spot. Also that morning, it snowed heavily. She got out of her house and attempted to start her car. Damn it! The car did not sound at all. That made her more nervous. She thought she should leave her car in a garage and take a taxi to catch up with the meeting. She was waiting for the moment for a long time and she did not intend to take any risk of missing the come together. Shortly, she rushed to the street to take the first taxi she can stop in the street. Snow was keeping her from walking ahead. She was like, oh my god, this must be a joke. I can hardly believe this weather after all the sunshine last week and no cabs at all. She switched her direction to stop a taxi since there were none running on that snowy morning. She even thought of hitchhiking at a moment of impatience. Just then, loomed an old taxi at the other end of the street. She felt she was getting older by the time the old taxi arrives and comes to a halt beside her waiting spot. The cab driver looked old as well. He pushed his head out the side of the window and asked, where? She replied, downtown. The old man, oh, sorry, it's out of way to me. I cannot. She wanted to yell, what the hell are you talking about? However, the words escaped from her tongue were different. But I need to go downtown right now, please. Finally, she got in the car and headed downtown. Sometimes, life shows us a bitter, stinging side face. It seems that we are under a big divine test, and those times when we need to be strong and think it will pass away just like all the prior hardships. However, oftentimes it's not so easy to do than saying that. However, oftentimes it's not so easy to do than it is to say it. And no! It was not a meeting with a lover or with any celebrity. And finally that day, Claire could have caught up the appointment on time with the woman. The woman meant mom to her. She was supposed to meet her mom for the first time in her life when she was 21. Maybe it's better to tell the story by her own words at this point. I met the woman who gave birth to me. I'd always dreamed about the day I would meet her. and never involved the most significant part of it all, learning that I was an abortion survivor. She was 13 years old when she became pregnant with me, and the only option she knew of, according to her mother, was abortion. She proceeded to go to an abortion clinic nearby, where she had an abortion. A few weeks later, she realized she was still pregnant and decided to go to an out-of-state, late-term abortion clinic to have a second abortion. During her examination at the late-term abortion clinic, she was told that she had been pregnant with twins. One was aborted, one survived. She was also told that it was too late to even have a late-term abortion. She decided to give me up for adoption when I was born two weeks later. If you ask her now, she will tell her that if she had known the results of abortion versus adoption, she would have gone straight to the adoption agency instead. Putting me up for adoption and giving me the best family I can imagine was a life-changing decision for all of us. Claire Caldwell because of the abortion, she was born two and a half months premature and weighed three pounds two ounces. She was on life support and had to stay in the hospital for two and a half months until she could be brought home. Her hips were dislocated and her feet turned because during the abortion, the sack that held her body together was broken. And when she was brought home, she had two casts on her feet and a harness. She was put in a body cast for four months and she didn't even walk until she was over two years old. It still affects her even today. I picked this real life story to boast the truth of how gifted we regular humans are. For Claire Colwell, it was hard to even grasp the fact that she survived and her twin didn't. She knows that she'll never know what she is missing because her twin didn't make it into this world, and what the world's missing because of all the babies that don't receive the same gift of life that you and I have. Claire says, but it shows me the magnitude of life. Life was not meant to be taken for granted or played around with. Life is the greatest gift you can receive. The hard part is that so many of us, myself included, just go about our lives not realizing what a gift we've been given and forgetting about how many babies are not even given this gift an opportunity of life.
This real life story shows me how superficial my daily worries are. Furthermore, what matters today does not matter tomorrow at all. Claire's story reminds me a life is a miracle itself, only if we stand on the right side of the hill. All the time, I kept feeling envious of the people who did a lot in the short span of their lives. They do whatever they want to and nothing keeps them from doing it. An anonymous quote that I like says, Learn to appreciate what you have before time makes you appreciate what you had. In closing part of this article, I want to share another true life story with you. That shows the courage of the people who learn to appreciate what they have, like having friends and knowing its importance. Horror gripped the heart of the World War I soldier as he saw his lifelong friend fall in battle. Caught in a trench with continuous gunfire whizzing over his head, the soldier asked his lieutenant if he might go out into the no-man's land between the trenchers to bring his fallen comrade back. You can go, said the lieutenant, but I don't think it would be worth it. Your friend is probably dead and you may throw your life away. The lieutenant's advice didn't matter, and the soldier went anyway. Miraculously, he managed to reach his friend, hoist him onto his shoulder, and bring him back into their company's trench. As the two of them stumbled in together to the bottom of the trench, the officer checked the wounded soldier and then looked kindly at his friend. I told you it wouldn't be worth it, he said. Your friend is dead and you are mortally wounded. It was worth it though, sir, said the soldier. What do you mean, worth it, responded the lieutenant. Your friend is dead. Yes, sir, the private answered, but it was worth it because when I got to him, he was still alive and I had the satisfaction of hearing him say, Jim, I knew you'd come.